why are we using Mark Rothko paintings during our worship services? Or, more specifically, why are we using Rothko paintings during the season of Lent? The rationale goes beyond the simplicity of his paintings for text overlay or the creation of slides. Rather, embedded within the form of Rothko's paintings lies an important theological message for the Lenten season. Rothko's paintings typically consist of canvases covered in one, two, three, or four solid shades of color. For many casual viewers, the art of Rothko represents all that is wrong with contemporary art. Simplistic, meaningless arrangements of paints that only a pretentious art snob would pretend to care about. After all, any of us could sit in front of a canvas and easily create one of these paintings without any artistic training. However, perhaps we should be hesitant before launching such harsh criticism, understandable though such criticism might be. If we are patient, we might actually find a depth to Rothko with an important theological message about what it means to represent or refuse to represent the world. Jonathan Anderson, a professor at Duke Divinity School and Biola University, has argued that Rothko's paintings actually represent a theological tradition called apophaticism. Apophaticism is a really big and kind of old technical word that refers to a tradition going back centuries within the Christian church. An apophatic approach to theology and faith is where one learns about God by stating what God is not. For example, rather than saying God is all-powerful, one might say that God is not lacking in power. Rather than saying that God exists, one might say that there is no possible world in which God fails to exist. This might seem like needless wordplay, but there is actually some important theological motivation behind this tradition. God, after all, is beyond all human comprehension. God is not finite like humans or subject to the imperfections that might condition our world. God is always greater than our concepts or theological systems, however useful they might be. Many of you might be perhaps familiar with the popular Chris Tomlin song, Indescribable. The lyrics are, in part, a practice of apophatic theology. Or we could go back to scripture, and we might recall what the author of Isaiah 55 said, quote, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Apophatic theology attempts to preserve this mystery of God, reminding us that God is always infinitely greater and more perfect than our thoughts and concepts. In a sense, this tradition is about keeping us from idolatry, from making God into our own image. It reminds us of our limited abilities to sit in our armchairs and attempt to think hard enough until we finally understand who God is. Apophatic theology is thus a means by which our understanding of God is renewed, transformed, and, as we Methodists like to say, sanctified. But how might this relate to Mark Rothko? Well, let us think for a moment. How might one attempt to capture the sense of apophatic theology in art? Perhaps it would look something like Rothko's paintings. To help us see this more clearly, let's take a look at one of Rothko's most famous projects, the Rothko Chapel in Houston, Texas. This chapel is an octagon shape with gray stucco walls illuminated primarily by means of a skylight. However, the most famous aspect of the chapel is that it features several of Rothko's paintings on the wall. And these paintings are a solid, dark color, which either appears black or is a deep purple, depending on the time of day and the lighting that comes through the skylights. 
The paintings are arranged to be the same shape as the altarpieces that would adorn a traditional cathedral. They are visual representations of silent meditation, possessing a form and structure of the sacred, but an acknowledgement of the limitations of human capability to image the divine. The paintings almost function as placeholders, waiting for a divine revelation to fill in the gap. This chapel invites us to reconsider the images of our faith that have become so familiar to us. The way in which we represent the divine takes a pause. We stand in a moment of silence to acknowledge the indescribable majesty and glory of God. I chose to use the Rothko paintings during the Lenten season for precisely these reasons. Lent is a time of spiritual renewal in which our idols are stripped away and our imaginations are sanctified and drawn deeper into the love of God. It is an opportunity for us to pause and stand in awe of the sublime mystery of Christ's redemption and the beauty of an indescribable God.